the more kneeling and pointless suffering and brutal loss that you and I experience. The more we experience those things, the easier it becomes. When we get the experience in something, we get it more and more easy to get things done. But only we practice the experience. Now, I did not say I didn't say that the older we get, the easier to get the easier we get as well. I didn't say that older we get, the easier it is not to sin. I mean just the opposite. The easier it gets to justify what we want do what we want and see if we can get away the dodge immediately. I mean we learn to hide things. But that that hiding things doesn't mean that we're gonna get away with it. So We learn it to start to justify things, even more and more. And the more we do, the more we like it. But then, what a disaster. We had to try to confront ourselves, and we had to try to challenge ourselves to get things clear by the time, by the way, by the moment, by the hour. We have to make things clear, straightforward, not to hide things. Otherwise, we're going to start to get more, more problems accumulate. So we have to learn from the grief, from this pointless and unjustified sufferings. Because the more we do that, probably we get more experience and the easier it becomes to deal with. But also, it could be easier to learn how to hide it, to manipulate these situations. And we had to try not to lie ourselves. Or we had to, we had not to lie ourselves. We had to. We must to not lie ourselves. And we must work out how to walk along with the truth, in light, in justice. Yeah? I mean, it is this way. Will you, will you keep something that you know that's going to produce a problem, is going to give it hard time is going to produce sorrow to you in the upcoming time. We had to think on that and work hard to override this, to delete this from our list, to, to, to put this behavior away. And to think in a forecoming generations. And to have a good honor from them. Think about that. That will encourage you. We encourage you to persevering daily. Persevering daily. In seeking justice. In seeking love. In seeking the truth. It is not just for us to full our hands or our desires, fill in our hands and have a full belly and be happy and rejoice yourself momentarily and not to think in what is ahead because the more accumulate, the more
we're going to have tomorrow. Whether it is good or bad. So you and I, we have to uh, be wise and to accumulate justice through straight situations and have everything sorted as much as we can. In every situation that is in our hands, we should clarify everything and bring it to justice. Not to let any trouble to our legacy. Not to let situation that is going to damage them. So the Bible says, Lord, let us be into account together. Let them generation that comes from for to be free. Yeah. Second Corinthians six four. Let's see if we can get that here. We can read this. He said this. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and disasters. To endure, to persevere in justice, to keep ourselves in justice, in life, and to persevere in this justice way of walking. Will you be honoring by the forthcoming generation? What well, will you like? We think about it. Will you, will you be? According to what you're doing? Or would you like to be? Even though if you're doing wrong now? Well, will you persevere and do justice? And to keep light with you? And to think in freedom for the forthcoming generations on the earth? And the more critical point for you and for I to finish the race in light, in truth, in justice. Will you persevere in it? My advice is let's keep persevering in light daily. Let's keep persevering in justice in daily. Daily. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 8 says this, For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Second Peter 1 verse 8 says, if you possess these qualities, qualities of justice, qualities of good behaving, good thinking, good planning ahead, qualities of work in truth, it doesn't matter if other people around you get annoying, get uncomfortable. Well, just you have to think what you have to face before the Lord at the end of the line but then also adding what will you get from your forthcoming generation will you be honoring and then I adding to the we will you allow them to enjoy what you leave into them or are you letting them a bondage, bitterness, anger, all these hardship times, all these disappointing situations that you cannot handle it, pass into them. No, we don't want that. We want to let them a clean path so they can walk through or at least, at least we try 
but we had to persevere hard. We had to enjoy ourselves with the Lord. And how to control these things and how to solve these situations as much as we can. The less trouble we left to our forecoming generations and the more wisdom we teach them, they will have hope and the world will become better than we are living at the moment. But we got to teach them. Now, in verse I said this, but whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from the past sins. Jesus Christ clean us. But why we want to come back to do the things that we know that are not profitable to us in all ways. Not profitable, not profitable to us in our personal time now. It will be not profitable to us in, in getting straight into eternal life when we confront, when we will be confronted by the Lord our Father in justice. These things will damage ourselves in all ways, the wicked things that we do. So we have to try to walk in line with justice and persevering on it. So you and me, we have to choose what we're going to persevere, doing wicked or doing right. For those who do right, Second Peter 1, he said this, If you possess these qualities of doing right, in, in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. Yeah. So, we have to possess the justice behavior, the just personality. The true personality that Jesus Christ has transferred into us. But we have to persevere on it. All those transfer, transferring behavior, personality that Lord Jesus gave to us, we have to persevere on it and keep it and multiply that. Because if we don't, we're going to be in trouble. Read Second Peter one and on. Then you will get a little more clear idea of what the Lord wants to clarify to you and allow you to acknowledge. Because if you do walk in justice and true, you will have, you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom. The second Peter. Verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 11. From our Lord Jesus Christ, you will have a very warm welcome. But we have to persevere. Persevere independently of the hardship that you have. Independently of the disappointing time you have. Independently of what situation you go. Regardless of all these things, regardless of the brutal suffering and grief that you're going through, you will not persevere in justice, in love, in uh, keeping the faith, the calling. Now, Luke 8.15 says this, But the sea on good soil stands for those with a noble heart. A noble and a good heart. Who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. So you will produce a good harvest, persevering in justice, in love. Persevering according to the personality of Jesus Christ. 
keeping the policies that he has for everyone that wants to get into the kingdom of heaven. Remember, all these things are independently of those hard times you're going through. Because there is no excuse. But let these difficult times to make you strong, to encourage you to stay more firm in justice, in truth, in obedience to the word of God. And stay awake because the Lord is giving directions to you all the time. Now, I want to tell you something. Let's not try to find positions. Let's try to stay simple, humble, in wisdom and in knowledge of the Lord. Now, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4 says this, Rather, as servants of God, we, we commend ourselves in every way, in great perseverance, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, distresses, but you keep endurance on it, persevering in justice, in life, and truth, in humbleness. We work hard to stay this way, life, just this way, true way. We will secure our reward. But let's not excuse ourselves because we are going through a tough moment, because we're going through a hard time. We're going to give up. We can't just give up like that. We have to persevere. We have to fight up to the blow. The blood. We have to fight up to the blood. But we have to persevere daily. Keep persevering daily. Keep persevering daily. Remember, the word of the Lord is just for us to understand, just for us to keep in. And it's for us to practice. So we can identify ourselves with our master. If you don't have a master yet, then let's get into it. And I advise you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you died on the cross for me. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And from now on, Lord, I plead you to be my Lord and my King. And my Savior, I hand into your hands my life, my heart. I open my heart to you. And Lord, please forgive my sins and clean me and deliver your word to me and to my mind so I can have a change and to try and to walk in justice, in life, in truth. From now on, you are my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ you do this, then you get in touch with your brothers and sisters and you start to walk a new life. A life that is going to secure your victory. It's going to secure your generations. It's going to secure your eternal life and salvation. So, let persevere daily. Keep persevering daily. If you persevere daily, you in justice and in, in light and in truth, you will secure your reward. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And remember, we are going to keep persevering in justice daily. Second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4. Have a read, and the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. Bye-bye.